call the meeting to order. Um, so first uh, on the agenda, if everybody has the attachment of the minutes. Yeah. Review and do we, um, we should, we, I think we need to review November minutes, but as well as December minutes. Oh, thank you. I don't think I attached those. Do you want to wait till November. next meeting for those or do you guys still have, I'm sorry, I forgot about that to be honest. Um, I know I have reviewed the November minutes. Has everybody reviewed them from last time? Yes. Janet has, Michael. So I think we're okay if, if people um, have reviewed the past November minutes. Is everybody? Okay. To approve them. Oh, Gina, hi. Hi, Gina. Sorry we just that. started. We were just saying that um, we weren't able to review the November minutes last time because there weren't enough of us. But if you did review them, um, and I know Janet and Michael said they've reviewed them. So if you also did, we could uh, just approve the minutes from November. Good. All in favor of approving the minutes from November? Aye. Okay. Approved. Um, and then we have December's minutes that Ali attached. I'm just trying to make sure I have them. Um, maybe we'll take a minute. Can I to interrupt those for minutes. one second? I'm sorry. Yeah. Cynthia, would you, Cynthia, would you mind taking yeah. minutes since Michelle's not here? Sure. Thank you. Just brief. Thank you. Great. Um, okay. So we're reviewing December minutes now. everyone I'll give a couple more minutes unless everybody's done reviewing You guys need a few more minutes to review nope. everybody ready um okay any any changes or we can approve the minute everybody in favor of approving great okay all right Allie okay um so Staffing update. Michelle had her baby on December 21st. So we'll start with the good news. Um, little baby boy, Dominic James, um, and they're doing great. She's, they're both healthy, happy, and she came to visit and we saw him in the parking lot from a distance. Um, anyway, so we're very happy for her and we miss her. She'll be back in March, I believe, at some point. Um, give her a back. I will. Um, Diane Barston, unfortunately, has left us. And that is a tremendous loss. We absolutely adore her as a person, and she's just been amazing for our department. She has been with us for four and a half years. Um, she actually left for a full-time job at Catholic Charities, so she's gonna continue to do good stuff. Um, she's gonna be expanding a program 
that they've been having out of Dan the Danbury location, and it's going to be helping low-income families um, th with grants. They can be eligible for up to six thousand dollars in grants with very low interest rates. So things that can help them with car repairs, car purchases, security deposits. So it's a really exciting program, and we'll probably actually be working with her. So um, we're just we're really really sad that she's gone, but she's good. Catholic Charities is lucky to have her, obviously. So we do have a program assistant um, position open, um, which is two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. till 5.15 p.m. So please, you know, if there's anyone you know of who you think would be a good fit, please have them apply. It's on the Darian website. If you go under human resources, um, it's listed there and people can apply. So it's open till the 19th, which is next Tuesday, I believe. Okay. Um, I'm working from home till next week. I'm quarantined. Cynthia's working from home. Michelle's on maternity leave. So that leaves Beth, who's there two days a week. Um, so it's a little challenging times in human services, but we're managing. We can still do as much as we possibly can from home. So we're, you know, able to, to work remotely, um, but it is not easy. <laughs> um, that's about it with staffing. Any questions or anything? Okay. Um, old business, um, nothing new to report on anything. We're carrying on as is with energy assistance. Um, for the holiday programs, it was a success. We actually just, it should be in the paper today, a list of all the different organizations that donated to us and various schools, Topanik included Gina, Royal School, um, the Darien High School, Joe Marzano, I don't even list them all because I'm afraid I will certainly forget somebody, but we were just overwhelmed as as we have in the past, but this year more, more than ever. Um, we had 54 families adopted and 53 seniors, so it all happened and everyone was very pleased and of course the recipients were the most happy and, and grateful. Um, so in terms of old business, I don't have anything else really to report. How's, yeah. how's the, the, um, the, not the pantry, but the, um, the closet. Home goods. The home goods, oh, good. yeah. The Amazon wish list, Gina, is amazing. Now I haven't been in the office since last week, but as of then, we were getting still getting packages like every day. And actually just this week I spoke to um, the Oxbridge Kids Care Club and they want us to do something for us and, and also utilize the Amazon wish list. So that was just tremendous, Gina. We had put it out, Diane had put it out in all the school wires um, in, I think it was in December. Um, so it's just amazing, it's, it's wonderful. So yeah, so we're doing really well with donations. Um, and I think it's something that's, you know, that people, it's very tangible, especially if there's kids involved, to, to be able to have a drive of some sort. Um, and it's so helpful. The numbers, and I'll send you our quarterly report um, so we can talk about it at the next meeting, but the numbers are off the charts for our home goods usage. So clients that would maybe come occasionally are coming on a regular basis now. So they can come once a month. So it's a tremendous resource for our clients and it really helps. So remember, this is, is an, that, this is, go ahead. I was gonna say, is that something that like the wish list needs to continually be updated? And is it something that you can do for the whole year? Gina. You have it ongoing? Oh yeah, it's up indefinitely. And Allie has access to it, I have access to it. So, you know, we can just periodically check it and say, oh, there's only, because it says need and have. So yeah. if the need, the need is going down, we just click it and add 10 more to it. So Allie and I both have access to it. We could just check it periodically. It's so great and so convenient, easy for those of us who use Prime and <laughs> I use it for everything personally. So yeah, it's so easy. That is awesome. It, it's wonderful. So thank you, Gina. That was huge. That was so helpful. And I think the people who are donating are finding it so easy as well. So um, it's great. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Old business? Yeah. Hi, Janet. Oh. Any follow-up to the postcard? Like, did you see an increase in calls? Anything like that? Any feedback? Any 
So Janet is referring to that mental health postcard, which you should have all gotten in the mail. So we did that in conjunction with the community fund. Um, and not per se, um, I'm hoping that, you know, it, when we got it the last week of December, so just a couple weeks ago. Um, so I personally, and Cynthia, you can chime in, have not, has anyone point out that that's the reason they're calling us? Um, but I'm sure that it impacted people and I'm hoping that that people will reach out to us or maybe they're going just on our website with the with the PR uh, PR QR code they don't even have to necessarily talk to us right and that's great because if people don't want to or they're you know ashamed not even ashamed but like embarrassed or or it's hard for them to reach out they don't need to talk to us unless they want to so let's hope that people we don't have a way to track how many people go on our website or anything like that so but it was a great collaboration and what a quick turnaround, Janet, right? We met the beginning no. of December and it was in everyone's mailboxes by the end of December. Thanks to you team. and your team. We had a really good team. Yeah, so that was great. Um, any other old business? Okay, new business. Um, this week it's all about vaccines um we have offered to help the health department um particularly with seniors so right now as of today people over the age of 75 in connecticut are able to register for um vaccines it's very fluid process and it's not or it has been i should say over the last few days so we have been getting a lot of calls and the health department needless to say i've been getting a lot of calls selectman's office the main number so we've been trying to be the point department for the calls so people can direct them to us particularly wow. for um and the senior center of course too particularly for the seniors you have to register online so not all seniors are comfortable or savvy enough with technology particularly older seniors right a lot of our clients don't even have computers so that's a huge obstacle so the state is supposed to i think discuss or uh, mention or whatever you want to call it more guidelines today they're supposed to be setting up an 800 number to help people who don't have emails i hope it's not like dss 800 number where you wait online for two hours but i'm going to try to be optimistic so we are trying to help um seniors we will be trying to help seniors who need it um who don't have family or friends or someone who can assist them um to to set up appointments for the vaccine it hasn't happened yet and the town of darien will be in the next couple of weeks i i don't know the exact date yet but jamie will put it out on her code red and it'll be on in social media and in the paper and every possible um resource um but it will be um, offered at some point in the near future, I think at the Darien Senior Center, they're hoping to set up clinics. But it is all by appointment, not just here. Everywhere it's by appointment. So, is there anything the you? library could do, like to have a computer or something? You know, they have those great. They have shields, and they could could the library set up like a registration or something? Possibly. I don't Would think there's going to be an outpouring of people who don't have someone to help them or who don't or already have access to computers. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, some towns, I was on a, a call yesterday with SWACA, which is a Southwestern Connecticut Agency on Aging, um, and some towns are already just setting up Gmail accounts for some people and helping them, the human service department. So we'll do that if we need to. I don't think it's going to be overwhelming the need. Um, but it's it's an, a constantly um, changing situation, you know, in terms or evolving, I should say. So we're trying to help. It's been nonstop phones ringing. And today, Beth is the only one in the office, but we will help her. Um, so oh, wow. that's something that's new. But you know what? We need these seniors to get it and want to help them however possible. So we shall see. It's Does developing. the communication come back to them like so they register for the vaccine and then do they get communication through email is that the, the idea? right so there's right now there's a system it's called the vam system so the seniors and it's actually on the health it should be on the health department's website by now too it was going up yesterday i believe so then they click on it and it and it can register you and then it should give them a confirmation email and then once they're approved they should be able to schedule an appointment in various locations so if you're a darien resident you don't necessarily have to get it in darien so you can get it it'll give you the option and, and vice versa in other towns 
Um, so there is a possibility that that this I mean the state is constantly, like I said, evolving in terms of you know what the next steps are. But um, there is a possibility that we will try to, with the health department, be able to schedule people online. You know, help the seniors that aren't able to do it themselves. So that's also something that's on the horizon, hopefully. Wow, that's a lot of work for you. Well, for everybody, you know, it's just, yeah. but we yeah. have to figure it out. We're all in this together. So it's <laughs> it's a learning process yeah. for everybody. Um, yeah. But we need, we don't want that to be an obstacle for them not to get, for those who want the vaccine to not get it, you know. Um, so Beth sent out, a, there were about, I think there were close to 100 people on the list of people 75 and over that wanted the information. So she sent out an email yesterday with the information and then there's maybe about 15 to 20 that are on that list, but it, people keep adding to that list, um, that we will reach out to today just to let them know that this system is up and running and if they need assistance, then we'll take it from there. So, crazy times, but there's hope, right? <laughs> oh, Michael, did you have something? I think you're muted. I don't know, can we unmute? I tried getting into that system for Connecticut yesterday, and I went round and round and round and round. So I you know, click, I'm not a robot. I clicked, I'm not a robot. Submit. I hit submit. It just at the circle. Literally, the circle. When I went on to the back onto the computer or the to iPhone about an hour later, it was still going round and round and round and round. So it is oh, not wow. working. And now I just got in this time, and it's saying that. Point to a picture that has a bicycle in it. If there's a bicycle in it, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm clicking on the bicycles that I can see. But if I'm a person with old age and I can't get, I'm back to I'm back to the whole thing. I am not a robot. <laughs> and now I'm it is to, not the best system for sure, and that's why we're hoping to hear more details today. Um, about this phone-in system and or how we can be a point person point agency or department to help people set up appointments directly so that's hopefully going to happen in the near yeah. future so we can I mean the amount of time I'm sure you and other people are spending on it is is and I've heard this from other seniors too Michael that they aren't getting anywhere or there's obstacles you know it's not so straightforward so um, no, we'll no, keep you crosswalks crosswalks I know. <laughs> those are challenging too sometimes you miss them right I miss them like oh, shoot, it's I a picture if you have in the corner right where there is if you if you have oh, yeah. bad eyesight or something yeah. right you know they, they keep asking question after question why why should that have to do with uh, an injection where they have a crosswalk or, or whether or not you can see a bicycle or or something like that. It's just it's, to me, the whole thing is ridiculous. Well, they're determining whether or not you're human. That's what it is. It's the catch up. So that it's not a real. Hopefully, it, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was okay. that I, I know you said Jamie's going to update it through her alert, but are there other ways that they're updating? I, I guess I haven't. I guess it'll be in the paper. I just want to, you know, if they're these are seniors who don't have actually, they're not online anyway just making sure that they're having ways that it's well, we not did just put, you yeah. having to make phone calls so we um did put out um a, a press release last week in conjunction with health and the senior center urging residents to c enroll in code red so you can remember you can get it by the phone call too so you don't even need to have a computer so you can get it by phone or by email so i'm hoping that a oh, lot okay. of seniors get it on their landline um and you know, we've, we've put it out there before and we, we can do it again. But yeah, we'll also have it, it'll be in the paper. So hopefully, I still get the paper for free in the mailbox. I don't know how, if that's everyone, but I like it. <laughs> um, so we'll put it out in all social media that we can. So yeah, so Jamie will give, you know, those weekly updates, the COVID updates she gives. She'll keep everyone posted in terms of what the latest developments are. Um, and those usually go out on Thursdays. So hopefully people are signed up for those. Um, and we also actually, while we're talking about it, um, 
reached out, sent out a letter yesterday to all the residents in the Royal. Um, Crystal, the property manager, sent me a list of all the of all the residents, which was huge because we have no way of knowing. I mean, we know some of the people who returned or some people that we just know from town, but there's 55 apartments. So we did get the list and we sent a letter out to all of them yesterday um, telling them about this new link and to call us if they need assistance. So they should be getting it, I believe, today. So we sent it um, priority mail. I think that's what it is. So, um, yeah, so we're trying and I hope people know that we're here to help them. We're learning as we go too, so it's not like we're experts on this, but we'll help them however we can. That's all we can really offer right now and try to figure it out together. But Michael, back to your thing. Hopefully we will be able to, um, I'm hoping to hear today, um, you know, hopefully we will be able to be this point department that can help people set up appointments without even going through the computer, right? That's the ultimate goal for, for I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of time people spend and creating accounts and then you have to wait for an email and so hopefully we can set up appointments right in the Darien Senior Center at some point in the near future. Of course it also depends on how many vaccines everyone gets because my understanding is certain towns are running you know it depends on supplies the demand is greater than the supply is at least that's my understanding. So we shall see. That's going to be the way it's going to be for a long time. I'm afraid so, but at least there's a vaccine. So there's hope, there's hope on the horizon. <laughs> so um, that's, is there anything else, Cynthia? I'm babbling. Is there anything else um, in terms of new business, anything I'm not thinking of? No, I think you've covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else, any new business or anything else you wanted to bring up? Okay. Keep in mind also that we do have two openings on our commission. So if there's other Darien residents that you know of who you think would be interested, please share that with them and let us know and we can connect them with the, you know, the people depending on which party they're registered with or if they're unaffiliated, then we can connect them with the appropriate person. Oh wait, there is one more thing. Okay. We got the um, the Fridays off approved, so we have to continue the meetings on Thursday. Ah, good one, Cynthia. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's it's going to continue as is the Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. till 5:15 p.m. So um, we have the four-day work week. Right. So we'll stick with this time if that works for everybody. What is this? Town hall had, was in a trial period. Um, of a four-day work week. So instead of working Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, um, the hours for town hall are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. till 5.15 p.m. We had had um, an evening um, hours till 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, but there wasn't much demand. Um, so it's going to stick with Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. till 5.15 p.m. for town hall hours. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're all set then. Oh, you okay. want to adjourn the meeting? I, I was gonna say, don't we, we have to make it official. Okay, um, I propose adjourning the meeting. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Allie. Thank you all, stay well.